Hello and welcome back and before we start today's video just a quick disclaimer straight off the bat I know when I make a lot of videos about these devices a number of you have got a problem with the way I a Brit pronounce the word router not router router and I think it's really really important that we get things into perspective you know come a little bit close to me old septic tanks and listen we here in the UK have given you guys in the US so so much we gave you James Corden we gave you Prince Prince Harry we gave you Piers Morgan Gordon Ramsay and Simon Cow I'm so sorry <laughs> Hello, and that's right. It's time for another Before You Buy, the video where I give you five reasons why you should be considering buying the new Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro 6E router and five reasons why you might want to remain on the fence. We've already done a full hardware software review for this device and we've got some bandwidth testing as well as comparisons with other Wi-Fi 6 and 6E routers in the market coming up very, very soon. But given the link to that previous video, this is a much more condensed version where we talk in bullet form. So let's go with those five good reasons why this should be the right router or router for you. That is right, Wi-Fi 6E. It's kind of an obvious one, but I do think it's worth touching on the fact that this is Google's first Wi-Fi 6E router. Now, for those that aren't aware, Google Wi-Fi 6 has been around actually commercially for a good couple of years, and 6E is the natural progression beyond that stage. A lot of people might think of it as Wi-Fi 6.5, really, rather than a wholesale upgrade, but there's actually a lot more to it. Now, Wi-Fi 6E takes advantage of a whole new radio frequency. When it comes to a lot of Wi-Fi devices over the last few years, when it comes to the actual wireless connectivity, uh, the old wireless connection there, there is a whole range of frequencies out there that can be utilised all the way through, all and getting close to, we're getting you know relatively close to the usability of the seventh, uh, 7 gigahertz frequency. We're not there yet. Now, across that whole frequency, there are lots of bands that people aren't or cannot utilise. Some of them are a kind of prov provisioned and held back for things like government, Government use, transport use, emergency services and stuff like that, and these are reserved frequencies. But in between that, in the big wider frequencies, a lot of that is up for grabs. But it's about having the hardware clients on your PCs, your mobiles, your you know, your home devices in order to communicate via that frequency. Now 6E takes advantage of the 6 gigahertz radio frequency. The majority of routers you see in the market these days are 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz frequencies there. That means they take advantage of that channel there, of the frequency. The 6 gigahertz frequency is largely untapped in the majority of commercial routers and only a handful, really, of um, kind of commercial grade 6E routers are in the market right now and Google have kind of banked on that with their latest Nest release for smart home implementation. And again, this device having the access to the 6E frequency means that rather than getting restricted to 800 uh, or 800 megabits to around 1200 megabits, you can exceed that wildly with the right setup on a 6 gigahertz band to get close to 2000 and 2400 megabits with supported devices. So the fact this is Wi-Fi 6E already makes it very attractive to a number of users out there that want a very easy way to jump onto this next frequency. Now this next point only really applies to users out there that are going to be utilizing this device in a mesh environment, the price tag. The price tag for one is a little steep for a single router, it's about $199 US. But at the same time, if you get the three pack and all three of them are identical, it costs you $399. So again, that works out around $133 per unit there. So again, that is for a Wi-Fi 6E mesh network on the three nodes set up there. And to make it even better, that is 6,600 square feet of potential coverage there. And again, so when it comes down to the price point, a single unit isn't the best value, in my opinion, for a 6E router in 2022, but as a mesh three pack that can be expanded upon even further, it is pretty good value indeed. 
this is one for the smart home enthusiasts and not just those that are completely implemented and locked into a Google Home IoT or smart home environment. It's the fact that this supports both Thread and Matter. Now, I say that um, the full implementation of both of those hasn't really reached fruition and it is planned for 2023 on this device within Google Home networks there. But what uh, Thread and Matter ultimately come down to is an agreed kind of... Um, level of um, hardware compatibility and uh, a kind of universal accepted language if you will and utilization between smart home devices between all of the big players we're talking apple we're talking android we're talking io uh, um, uh, microsoft we are talking all of the big hardware network players out there all getting behind this working together for this uniform connectivity and this router has this on board so in terms of future proofing you're still going to be able to get this now and integrate it into your larger network as more and newer iot and smart home devices arrive on the scene thanks to that universal slow but you know steady increase into support of thread and you know from that matter Now, this next point is a little bit nebulous. First and foremost, in each individual node supports up to 100 devices uh, of simultaneous access. And again, each node you add, adds another 100. So the 300 pack would be 300 supported devices. Now, 100 supported devices by a Wi-Fi 6 router is not unusual. It's actually fairly standard at this hardware level. But what is interesting is very user-friendly settings built into Google Home to allow the system to intelligently understand the difference between uh, POS priority of service and QoS quality of service on a um, service level between those hardware uh, client devices. What I mean by that is, if you are running a setup where one of those 100 users is using a kind of VoIP or like Zoom or something like that to communicate, you can set it within Google Home that that has priority of the bandwidth. You could have 100 users all sharing the same bandwidth, but if you just tick a simple option within Google Home, that can, the app that configures this device, then that quality of service automatically goes to the person using VoIP or comm services. The same thing goes for gaming and other features too. So the idea that even though you've got that broader spectrum of supported devices, there are huge numbers there, all of which can be put into groups and guest networks and stuff like that, at the same time, you can also have the system automatically en masse decide which devices on the fly are the ones that need the priority of the bandwidth there overall. So you've got the option of uh, personal configuration, included, including the option for the system to at least understand on the fly what needs to get priority on the bandwidth. This next point, again, if you'd watch my full review on this device, you'll know that I kind of ragged on the Google Home app a little bit there. But I do think it's worth highlighting. It does have good things going. But first and foremost, compared with the last time I properly utilized Google Home around two and a half years ago, it has seen a number of quality of life improvements. They've got rid of a lot of the chaff on there. And as an app goes, it's still very um, user-friendly in the extreme with every single option, even port forwarding and firewall rules, having little descriptions and little labels there for the less technologically versed to know what they are doing the app itself it's still a little limited it still requires you to buy into the ecosystem of google there's no avoiding that but at the same time if you are a novice to networking this app really will hold your hand the whole time again if you're tech versed it may hold your hand a little bit too much but everyone else who doesn't know what they're doing will welcome that google home app whether you're using a smart home or just utilizing it for the app now as good as all those five things are, if you are thinking of jumping on the Google router um, roadmap there, bear in mind it's not for everyone. And here are five reasons why I do think you should sit on the fence or start looking at other 6E routers right now. This one is a real kick in the plums, but the fact that this device arrives with gigabit network connectivity there and Ethernet connectivity for me is not a great thing both the WAN and the LAN on the back of every single one of these is 1 GBE. Now a number of you may think well it's all right 1 GBE is still 109 megabytes per second or a thousand megabits per second to play around with. What's the problem? Well 
a lot of ISPs, internet service providers, are arriving on the scene with greater than gigabit internet speeds, thanks to fiber being rolled out globally in a number of different places. Now, if you are someone that has that and you're having it ran into the wall, into a fiber uh, wall box in your home or office, or you've got an ISP router that you were planning to connect this to, what's going to happen is this router is going to immediately bottleneck you to 109 megabytes per second or 1,000 megabits per second, give or take. Now, on the face of it, once you've got loads and loads of devices connected to this, none of those users are going to get greater than gigabit upload or download anyway. But it's the idea that the internet going into this device that you may be paying through the nose for a faster internet connection is getting bottlenecked as soon as it touches this. And that bottlenecked internet connection is what's being shared out across the devices and the greater node and mesh network. So 1GB on this is really surprising. The price point is good and there are greater than gigabit Ethernet uh, Wi-Fi 6 routers out there that cost more than this, but still, this is Google and future-proofing, and giving me 6E while removing gigabit Ethernet for me is a real shame. Earlier on, when I said if you're an existing Google Home user or you're thinking of jumping into the Google ecosystem or upgrading your existing one, one incredibly important difference about this device that I don't think gets anywhere near um, the coverage on publications and reviews that it should you need to bear in mind and that is this is not backwards compatible you cannot integrate this into an existing uh, mesh uh, nest setup from google or the google wi-fi system those little circular round pods that we reviewed on the channel a couple of years ago you can't integrate this into it it's going to connect with other nest devices in the google home environment other google iot and smart home devices but when it comes to integrating this into an existing router mesh with google google routers it's not possible now that's a real shame given that the original google wi-fi and the nest upgrade that came out i think uh, last year those two devices can be backwards compatible and that allowed you to instead of upgrading your entire router mesh network you could have just gone right i've got this much money now i can upgrade that area or the main primary router and then as time wears on replace individual nodes over time thereby spreading the old cost but with this you have to wholesale replace all of your routers or have a secondary network which is not ideal and i'm really surprised given this is a tri-band router with 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz that it couldn't even allow one of those to act as an existing or added backhaul for this device to work with an existing Google router mesh network. Now this like next one might counter one of my points I said earlier on about reasons to go for this but again not everyone's the same and that is that the Google Home app is pretty much the only thing you can use to control this. There's no desktop Google and um, client app you can use you can't access it you know logically via the browser there are ways and means and workarounds and you can integrate it into other third party tools to a point in a smart home mesh environment. Again, thanks to that support on like Matter and Thread and of course, um, and basic command level access to this. But there's still no denying that the majority of users without a, you know, a significant degree of technology are going to be locked into that Google Home app. This is definitely a device that's aimed at novice or low end network knowledge users. And that Google Home app as a Google, uh, as a IoT home app, it's tremendously user friendly. It's really, really easy to use, incredibly user friendly, setting up devices and holds your hand the whole time. But as a router application, uh, an app that's going to be managing a router, managing the ports, and getting a little bit more config there. That app is incredibly lackluster. It doesn't have a number of very easy domestic level um, router services built into it that I would have expected from a router of this caliber. It's a great IoT smart home app, but it's just as a router application, it is very left, leave me very wanting. These last two points, again, I'm going to put them separately, but they're kind of dealing with the same problem. And that is that this is not the biggest jump in the world from its predecessors. Now, I understand that Google could have left significant amounts of time between hardware releases if they chose to. And indeed, their router portfolio is by no means exhaustive and going to rival the likes of Asus Netgear, Fritz or anything like that. But at the same time, this is not the biggest jump 
over that of the Nest and the Google Wi-Fi that came before it. Really, the only thing to sing and dance about on this is that 6E connection. And given that the Google um, original Google Wi-Fi and the Nest that followed it are now starting to see good price drops out there, this, as a big wholesale upgrade and at its RRP, is not the biggest jump over its predecessor. And therefore, if you already own those, notwithstanding the lack of backwards compatibility, it's just not a big upscale. And the fact that you'd have to replace a lot of the nodes anyway because you can't integrate it into it, that lack of huge or even significant hardware jump other than um, that uh, 6 gigahertz frequency support there means that it's a little bit lackluster in terms of its upgradability over your existing hardware network as it stands. And carrying on talking about upgradability and this arriving and Google clearly trying to put a little bit of future proofing by 6E support there. In 2023, we're more than likely going to start to see, maybe at the halfway point towards the end of the year, we're going to start seeing Wi-Fi 7 appliances arriving on the, on the market. Not just routers, but client upgrades, PCI cards, maybe even somewhere down the line USB upgrades from things like TP-Link, D-Link and more. Now, those devices that have got Wi-Fi 7, they are going to have significantly more speed, uh, up to apparently 5.8 gigabits per second maximum bandwidth support there and that's on that single channel which is going to dwarf the combined um ax5400 or ax4200 i believe um on support uh, on this device on its maximum bandwidth uh, depending on where you are in the world wi-fi 7 is going to arrive it's going to be expensive but if you were already using a Google Home setup and you weren't going to up and you were on the fence a little bit already because of the lack of backwards compatibility and that it hasn't been the most significant hardware jump, you're going to be even more put off when you know that next year, to even middle towards the end, is going to be Wi-Fi 7. And if you're going to upgrade, why not wait six to eight to ten months anyway? Because then you're going to get an even more future-proof product. Maybe Google will roll one out then. But when you look at brands like Synology that we've reviewed on the channel recently with their Wi-Fi 6 router, I've got to say, with a Wi-Fi 6 router, even with those two devices, what they also bring to the party is the opening of the 5.9 gigahertz frequency, a frequency that was originally reserved for transportation use, which they've now got access to. But the Google uh, uh, router doesn't. Why is that important? Because that allows performance on this device very close to that of the 6E router. And this is a Wi-Fi 6 router, which only then, once again, underlines that this is not the significant hardware upgrade that many people would have liked to see. But this has been a before you buy on the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro 6E router. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did you go for this? Has this video made you or put you off getting this device? Let me know. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more. There'll be links in the description to the full length hardware software review and other services and guides on this uh, subject entirely if you want to learn more click subscribe because we cover the subject of routers and networking a lot here on the channel and if you need advice or help choosing the right network router for your home or business environment the free advice section to NAS compares is over there and below is the free community network forum on there where me eddie and a bunch of other people can help you out with your queries and finally if you are thinking of buying any of the products mentioned today from amazon if you were going to go there anyway Use the links in the description. Using those doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me and Eddie keep this channel going and doing what we are doing every day. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.